today we are going to show you how to install a stage 2 plus kit. In this case, it's a combo kit. I will be doing an install on a set of struts as well on a 2010 Honda CRV. I won't be showcasing you how to install the struts because that's not what we're doing here today. But we will be doing uh, a walkthrough on how to install the kit. And uh, for those of you who are not very savvy in reading the instructions on the website, um, this will probably make it much easier for you folks. So the kit comes with a roller airline. You get the harness kit. You also get the water trap. You get the remote control. You get the relay. You also get the ignition switch wiring, the antenna, the power wire supply kit, the manifold, six fittings for the manifold. These guys right here are actually called uh, mufflers. So for those folks who don't want to hear a sound uh, as you air out, that's what these guys are for. If you do want it, uh, you want to have the sound, you just eliminate that. These are fittings for the water trap and also the manifold. I'll explain that shortly. You also get the, the pressure switch and the fittings for the tank itself. So this tank itself is a seamless tank. Uh, we do not carry these, just so happen I've been working on, on seamless, just testing their products and seeing how they work out. Um, I've heard some companies or people complaining about their tanks. I wanted to give it a try uh, just to see it for myself. And if it is a good product, we might offer it at AirTech. All right, so we're gonna the tank first. The first and foremost thing you wanna do is you wanna put Teflon tape, or in this case, you wanna set up and make sure you have all your fittings correctly. All right, so you notice right here in the first two port, in your case of the tanks that we carry at AirTech, the five gallon, four gallon, or two and a half, two and a half gallon tank, you're gonna have four fitting ports up front, okay? In this case, we have two. I'm leaving these two right here open because this is where I'm gonna mount the compressors, literally screwing it right onto it. On this side, I've decided to put the pressure switch. I'm putting it on top. I don't want to put it on the bottom. Uh, reason being is I don't want moisture to get on here whatsoever. Uh, if you do get moisture in there, it gets rusted, and or it could even plug it depending on, let's say, if you're in northern states, if you're really cold weather. You can get ice in here and it'll freeze it and it won't start your compressors. So make sure you do that. Um, I blocked off these sides because I'm not putting anything over here. So remember, you're gonna be using three ports. You're gonna be using three ports to feed the manifold and the tank. So the first two up front, compressors, one right here, pressure switch, and I'm sorry, there is one more, which is on the back side, so it's actually four, my mistake. There's four, okay? The four, this one right here, which is gonna be the water trap. I've already put that port there. We're gonna put this one here. You're gonna screw right on right there. And then, you're gonna have a fitting to it. Water trap. This is to prevent moisture, and you wanna prevent moisture going into the manifold itself, because if you don't, if you don't put that on, you can have the valves freeze in winter. You could also get errors on the manifold, right? So if you look, we have plugs, plugs. You have the two open ports, which is for the compressors. You have one for the pressure switch because we need to activate it. So you have one feed, it'll feed through and onto the manifold. You might have a different fitting pack itself. This is just a general idea of how you would do it. Okay, however you want to do it, but up to you if you have your own preference and style. There's no wrong way of doing it, but that's one way of doing it. Okay. I like putting the water trap before the manifold. Some people say, oh, well, maybe I should do two water traps and put it on the compressors. And then they have a line feeding from the tank over to the manifold. You shouldn't doubt, do it that way because no matter what, even if you put a water trap before the manifold on the compressor side, you're still gonna have moisture in the tank and you're still, you'll still be able to uh, pull the water into the manifold. So you just realistically just need one water trap. Right. So you have, uh, you're gonna notice that you're gonna have two ports on each side. You have an exhaust and you have an inlet. Same thing goes for this side. You have an exhaust and you have an inlet, okay? So 
We have an inlet. Feed it right over here. Doesn't matter which side. On the other side, you can just plug it. Actually, you could even also do this. Um, if you want to put the, the pressure switch, you can actually screw it right on the side, right over here. You'll still be able to read pressure, okay? have your, your airline hose going from here, your in, over here, and you'll have your pressure switch if you want. You can do it this way. If you want to do it off the tank, you can do it off the tank. But if you do do it off the tank, if you want more of a clean look, you just do it right off the manifold. If you want to do it right off the tank, that's your preference. I think I'm going to do it right here on the pressure switch. Just because I think it looks kind of cool, right? Um, and then of course, then you have these guys. You're gonna have six fittings itself. Just remember though, if you're feeding one, you have to plug this side, okay? Because if you don't, the air that feeds through here, out through there, so you don't want that, okay? So you're gonna get these fittings. Some people like compression fittings. Some people like PTC things. I like both. It doesn't really matter. Compression is a little bit more, um, a little more work. Not to install the fitting, but the airline through. So it's compression, compression fitting. There you go. Just get a plug for this side. Pressure switch on the tank, or you put the pressure switch on the manifold. I think you can do it on the manifold, it looks kind of cool. You get one feed, you can actually go here, block this side, depending on how you're doing your setup. Um, make sure to put Teflon tape on all of these. If you don't, you're gonna have leaks. You got the back of the manifold itself, there's a harness plug. And if you look closely right here, okay you have a plug here, and this happens to be for your antenna. So if you don't, you're like wondering, but what is this for? Well, that's for your Bluetooth. This is so that you have long range. And if you have music and all that custom trunk setup, and you don't connect this, you're basically, you know, plugging. So make sure to, uh, this actually just snaps right in to so be able to push it right in. And you got the antenna. So if you want your Bluetooth to work, uh, make sure to plug that in, because if you don't plug that in, guess what? It's not gonna work. So it's pretty straightforward. It's really not that complex. Um, it's uh, actually a very good kit. Um, super popular right now uh, in the States. So. And moving on to Europe. So here's the harness itself. Here's the plug. It's not that hard. Just plug it in here. All right. You're also gonna have a red wire. I'm sorry. You're gonna have a red wire, a black wire, and then you're gonna have a blue wire. So your blue wire itself is gonna be your ignition. All right, this doesn't mean it's going straight to ignition, but this is your ignition. It's basically what activates the manifold itself, okay? This is what activates the manifold. Constant power, ground. Now these guys are gonna be going, this particular one is gonna be going off to the relay, okay? And then blue, the red one will go right onto the relay itself on the power side, and then your ground, obviously, ground to the chassis, okay? And you're gonna have your ignition wire. So this one is gonna be your actual ignition wiring harness itself, okay? This will go to ignition, so whatever source, not necessarily you're going to the key and stripping it out and going off the ignition. Ignition source meaning that 
you're gonna go to a fuse, let's say a, a fuse outlet, say like 20 amps, 30. Don't do anything 10 because it's just not enough itself, okay? Well, this will go to the front and then it'll roll over back to your relay, okay? And then I'm gonna show you in a little bit as I'm doing the install where it goes, okay? What are these guys for? Where does this go? Where does this one go? The, you know, the, quickly, I'm not looking at the instructions real quick, but if I remember correctly, this one's going to the main power, okay? So if you're, your, your four gauge wire, which is this guy right over here, you have your four gauge wire, this one's gonna go straight to the battery. And you want this one close to the battery. You don't want it reverse into the relay, into the trunk, or wherever you're doing it, in the back of the car. You want this in the front. So let's say for whatever reason, this decides to melt for whatever reason, it'll stop right here, right up front. It'll prevent the whole wiring while it's traveling all the way to the back, catch on fire. We use a heavy grade of four gauge wire. Um, I like to run these inside of the car, not on the outside of the car, but there, that, that doesn't mean that you can't run it on the inside of the car, that's fine, okay? Uh, the, the grade quality on the four gauge, it's really, really strong. So if for whatever reason you're working on a particular car and you just can't get into the panels, say like a Volvo, uh, I did one and it was very, very tough. So you'd have to drill holes and such, so. But yeah. So we'll get on to that. I'll order to this next segment. Um, don't forget the compressors. Uh, I don't have it here, <laughs> but it does come with the compressors if you are buying the kit itself, okay? So if you're just buying the Stage 2 Plus alone, you still get the harness, you still get the power wire, you still get the airline, you still get the ignition, the remote control, you still get the relay, and you still get the water trap and the fittings for it itself. But if you do end up getting the Stage 2 combo without the struts, you'll get the compressors and the tank itself. You just won't get the seamless just yet. Again, I'm just doing a test making sure that it is a good product. I hear people like it and I hear people don't like it. So we want to give it a try and see if it's worth adding over to our company itself. Um, if you are ordering a combo kit, uh, let's say with the struts itself, um, they will come with the struts, okay? Um, and, and relatively, it's really not that hard. Um, common mistakes that I see people do is they don't do the water trap. It could potentially damage the O-rings to not put any type of antifreeze into the tank itself. Um, these manifolds, along with other brands like Airlift, uh, I believe EZ2 has something similar, as well as these kind of electronic manifolds itself, they use O-rings on the inside. And if you use antifreeze um, or antifreeze uh, or anti-seize, uh, basically what it does, anti-seize, it keeps it from freezing, right? It's great, but they use O-rings on the inside. So if you ever open up a radiator cap, Right, and right, you get that crust uh, from overbeating, let's say like a reservoir or a radiator cap from whatever, uh, you see all that crust, you'll get that same effect into the manifold and that will damage the O-rings and that's what you don't want. You wanna prevent that from happening, okay? So keep that away, just put the water trap in line, make sure that this guy doesn't get any water, any type of moisture. If you do end up getting water or moisture, um, just take off the, uh, the fittings on the manifold, blow it out uh, with like a compressed air, bring it inside the house, uh, let it dry for about a day or two, and it should go back to normal and you should be fine. Pretty cool remote. You got five memory presets. And yeah, so again, this video is not to show you how to set your presets. Uh, we will do another video for that later on, but this is more on how to do the install. Okay, all right, so uh, let's get started. All right, so I decided to put the pressure switch on the side of the manifold on the inlet side instead of blocking it. And as far as the relay goes, that's the important key. Well, the important key. <clears throat> so we're gonna discuss a little bit of, actually before we get to the relay itself, we're gonna talk about the pressure switch. All right, so you have two ports itself. Um, this particular one is gonna be a little bit different how you guys are gonna wire it. Uh, you're just gonna ground one side, doesn't matter which side it is. Uh, so I'm gonna ground this area right here, probably onto the bolt itself. I'll, sur uh, I'll scratch up the surface, peel this off, put a ring terminal on here. And then of course, with the new screw, the screw's gonna go in and we're gonna ground it down. 
or maybe, you know, put a little terminal on this side actually and, and ground it anyway. But the idea is that one of these two has to be grounded. Now you're gonna notice in the kit itself, you're gonna have these, uh, these end terminals that are just there. And you're probably asking yourself, why? And this is one of the reasons why, okay? So uh, you're gonna ground one of them. Again, we're gonna ground whichever one. Let's say in this case, we're gonna ground this one. Uh, so we're gonna go onto the harness itself, okay? One of them has to go to ignition. If you notice here, it's gonna tell you, okay, that the, the number is an 86, okay? So if you look up closely, you're gonna see it says 86, which is this terminal right here, okay? It doesn't matter which side goes to, to, the, to the relay itself, but being that this is such a long cable, we're gonna put this one going to the ignition, straight to the ignition, okay? And so what you're gonna do is, you're gonna take, you're gonna clip this off here, okay? And you're gonna add it over to number 86. So if you look in here, I'm not quite sure if you can see it clearly, but this is 86 up here, and down here is 85, okay? So on 86, you're gonna connect one wire, which is on, clipped onto here, okay? So you're gonna trim this off, and then on the harness itself, you're gonna notice you're gonna need some ignition as well, right? So you have the red wire, you have the black wire, which is your ground, it's obvious, and then you have your blue wire, again, which happens to be 86, all right? I'm not quite sure if you guys can see that there in the video, but it's 86. So you know 86 is on the top, 85 is on the bottom, all right? So we're gonna trim those, put these together, and then you're gonna st strip this area, and you're gonna put them together, this way you're on, okay? So that that's, goes for that one right there. Now. This one right here, straightforward, straight onto 85 itself. Nothing special, that's what it is. That's what activates, uh, it reads the pressure. You obviously need a ground for a relay, but being that you're grounding the pressure switch, that'll activate the relay itself. And then there, you got the top bolt right here. That would be your power wire, okay? So, obviously I'm not installing it just yet, because I'm currently, Setting up doing a little trunk display, but uh, you'll be able to see that. So you'll install this one right here, like so, which is your four gauge wire. That one's going straight to the battery. Like I said earlier, make sure that the fuse is on that side. And uh, then you got this guy over here, which is right off the harness. You place this one. So you'll see the red wire, which is what I was explaining. I just got cut off there for a minute. I don't know what happened. But uh, you have the four gauge power wire right here, which Remember, you got the uh, fuse, you want it to go all the way to the front of the car, closer to the battery. And then uh, from the harness itself, you're gonna have a power uh, that you're gonna need, uh, you know, constant power, and it'll have your fuse right there. So, you wanna connect it right up here, okay? Which you should see, it is on number 30, 85, 86, 87, and 30, so it's 30. You got 30 right up here, okay? And then on the bottom ones, which is what I was explaining, um, you'll have the uh, compressors on the power side. So, again, uh, compressors, power side, you'll connect over here. You're not doing any type of grounds here. This particular one right here will go right onto your pressure switch, okay? And then uh, the top one right here, okay? This will go on to your ignition source, which was, uh, you got that blue wire, this guy right here. And then you also wanna share it with this one right here. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and uh, show you what it's supposed to look like. So you guys can do a good job. All right, be right back. All right, so we just finished up making uh, the mock-up, or actually not even the mock-up, uh, 
what I'm working on on the trunk on the Honda CRV itself. So you guys can do it however you want. Uh, I wanted to show you how I did it itself. Uh, I did a board. This is going in the spare tire in the CRV. I mounted the compressors already onto the board. The manifold. You have the antenna. Um, I'll probably just put a little hot glue right there and just kind of like just put it there. You know, kind of cool. Um, I decided to put the pressure switch on the side of the manifold on the one inlet just because it makes the tank look much nicer um, and also I decided to get uh, went to the store and got myself uh, a bleeder valve just to release it in case I ever want to put like uh, an air hose to it feed the wheel uh, you know put air pressure on, on the tires itself so um, more so so remember back here if you look back here, you see all the wirings itself, how I did them. Um, I did them all as zip tie. I don't really like using electrical tape too much. There's no wrong way of doing it. You could use electrical tape, but if you do, uh, if you do a good job, uh, it'll come out good. I did use some electrical tape here because I didn't want any kind of wires. Uh, one side is positive, uh, which is going to the relay, and then the other side is your ground. Okay. So uh, I zipped them all tied just to give it a nice clean look. And uh, let me show you what it looks like on the back. So remember, you are using one side, they're gonna be ground, and the other side, which is gonna be going off to the relay, okay? All right, so now we got all these wires. And these are the wires that are gonna be going to the front of the car, okay? So. This is for the remote control, which is your black wire. And that blue wire that I was telling you guys earlier, okay, <clears throat> which is gonna be going all the way to the front of your ignition, okay? So, let me just adjust this a little bit more. There we go. So, you have that blue wire, which is that long wire, which is gonna be your ignition, okay? And then you're gonna have your black wire, which is coming off your manifold, okay? That's gonna be grounded. And then this gray wire, which I use, which is for the pressure switch, all right? Um, being that the pressure switch wire was short, I just picked up a cable here, tapped it in, and this is gonna be a ground, okay? Then you have your red wire, okay? Which is the one I showed you earlier in the video that goes off to the relay and onto one of these, okay? And then the other one is obviously your pressure switch. Then your compressors, which is your red wires. I spliced them and used the terminals of the black wires and uh, used the ends just because they look, they actually work really good and bridged them together and then uh, put them on the, right on the top of the relay. And then this one right here, okay, that's gonna be for your four gauge wire, which will go in straight to the battery. So nice and neat. Uh, this is a, a nice proper way. I like using zip ties just because it looks kind of cool. You know, uh, anybody ever does look in there, they can see it. You got your two fuses, one for your ignition, and the other one is just your main power for the manifold itself. And then obviously this one, uh, your other. Now you have your ground wires over here. These will be your ground wires over for the compressors. And that's it. Now it's just time to install this. So let's get working. All right, so now that we have the management in the trunk, or rather, in the spare tire, uh, on the CRV, we gotta pass the cables. And I think it's much easier to run the airlines and the electrical on the inside of the car. In this particular ride, I'm running the power supply, or actually the ignition, and the uh, remote wiring, which is this guy, also known as the comp, uh, on the left side of the car because the fuse panel happens to be on the left. Uh, to make things life easier, you can get yourself a, a coat hanger, okay? And what you wanna do is, you can go to the coat hanger towards the end of it. Well, not so much realistically, not that. You're pretty much right around there. And you can add some uh, electrical tape, okay, like this. And that's gonna make your life easier to run it like on the panels. If you need to snake it, right? That's the terminology. You wanna snake it through. 
you want to be careful obviously this is not like so much concerning on the ignition right you can jam it pull it do whatever you want it's not going to damage if it does you can just easily trim it but you want to be careful with the with this plug right because if you do pass it through and you're just you're you're stuck in there like in the panels and you're all wedged in and you're just pulling chugging away you can easily just break this so just be be gentle um i like to do it one at a time um instead of uh both of them at the same time just to be on the safe side you don't want to make any kind of damages to it so i'm going to go ahead and snake this right now pass it along uh I'll give you a walk through on the side of the car. You'll notice that I removed uh, a little bit of the panels, right? And uh, we'll be running it on the inside, on the left side of the car. And this will make your life much easier if you remove the seat. Um, on the other side of the car, you'll notice that I removed the front seat and that's so that I can pass the airline hoses and I also have to pass a four gauge wire there happened to be a, a, a nice hole on the right side uh, like a grommet pretty big and uh, I could snake it through there really nice without causing any type of kinks what you don't want to do is cause any type of kinks on your airline hoses because if you do it'll give you problems airing out not so much airing up but airing out so do a nice clean job, remove the seat, don't rush, do it the right way, and you'll have a good success. All right, so I'm gonna go get ahead and start in and pass these, uh, these airlines and the uh, power wires. While working also in the trunk, we're actually doing, back to our famous thing that we like doing, is zip tying, um, just make it look kinda cool. But uh, we gotta set up grounds, right? Uh, some people like doing one bolt and sharing one ground um we don't like doing that as far as air tech goes installs uh so we use uh you could use, use a sandpaper or you can use a this kind of a brush grinder uh just simply just find a section for it you don't want to you don't need to go all the way to the front of the car the whole car is ground uh chassis right so just sand off the section get a sandpaper and just literally just go ahead or you use the brush, brush it off, tap in, you're good to go. You don't need grounds far away. Uh, in this car right now, we're doing four grounds, two for the compressor, one for the manifold, and the uh, the pressure switch, right? So, all right, we're gonna get to it, let's go. All right, so we got everything already done. Um, everything's already been grounded. Like I told you guys, two grounds to the back. One for the compressor, one for the other compressor. We ran the airline hoses on the inside of the car already. Well, right side on the CRV. The left side were ignition and the remote control. Ran it alongside the panels. And then obviously the, uh, <laughs> the ignition ran through here. Up top, you kind of can't see right here, but there's a fuse up there. Uh, I use a voltmeter, because obviously this is what I do for a daily, uh, to check, obviously, when the ignition is off to see if there's uh, any voltage. And obviously when it's on, the voltage is on. So this way the controller works and the compressors. We've tested for leaks, no leaks whatsoever, so we're good to go. Positive, obviously for the battery. Your ANL fuse, we'll mount that in just a little bit. And of course now we gotta tie this guy up so it's nicely tucked, along with the airline hose that you see right here. But that's when uh, we're installing the air struts. And then, uh, airline hose, this guy right over here. Make sure to uh, not cause any type of kinks. Cause uh, you wanna give it some slack. Otherwise, you're gonna have problems. That's one thing you don't want. Make sure if, if you're running a boosted car and let's say like a, an Evo, I, if I remember correctly, the Evo's uh, turbos are in the back. So if you're running the airline hoses, just try to run one airline hose to the left side of the car and then 
airline hose to the right side of the car. You don't want to make the common mistake of running the airline hoses close to the turbo because uh, I hate to tell you that much, but uh, these guys will melt. So even if you have braided hoses, it'll it'll be an issue. So well, it's off to install the air struts now and uh, hope to see it complete. The segment is officially over. If you guys have any questions, uh, please send us an email. Uh, Anything we can do for you, uh, send it over to tech, that's T E C H, at airtech.com. And I hope this uh, video I helped you guys out with any type of installs. You guys have a great day. Take care.